404 is the error code when you try to reach a URL that does not exist. And if this happens, you want to display a nice 404 error page for your visitors. So this is one example from Lego, really highlighting that this is a 404. This is Slack using a beautiful kind of video game-ish background. And here's another example from Marvel, also highlighting that this is a 404 and some playful copy. So this has been a trend for ages to be a little bit more fun and playful on the 404 page and also be a little bit nerdy highlighting the actual technical error code. So this is the 404 page that we are creating on the Divi Crib. And it has a nice illustration to the right with our golden brand color. And to the left, we have some copy and a link to the home page because we want to make it easy for the visitor to not get stuck, but to find the content that they were actually looking for. And I will also show you a little trick on how to uh, horizontally um, center this content in relation to the image. So you can see that it's in the middle here. And there's a trick to do that in a responsive way like this. And uh, before we get started, I just want to show you the default 404 arrow page, uh, how it would look like if we do, would do no customizations in Divi. So to, to see a 404 page, you can just say, add a slash after the domain and then just type some dummy text and you will probably land on a 404 page. So this is the default look. And I wouldn't say that it's uh, funny or creative at all. So let's fix that by going to the WordPress dashboard. And we head, head to Divi and Theme Builder. And we will add a new template. And this one should be applied to the 404 page. So that's in the bottom. And let's click Add Custom Body and Build Custom Body. I know that some people remove the top uh, header and the footer from the 404 page, but I would say that it's more important than ever to keep this to make it easy for your visitors to uh, find uh, the content that they were looking for. So we are building from scratch. And I will choose a two column layout for this row. So we have the text to the left and we'll have the illustration to the right. So we start with the text module and we will enter our top heading 404 error and let's move this one to the left and we'll make this a heading four now i will add another text module below text and here's the heading one oops like that and let's make that a heading one there we go. And I actually want this heading one to be a bit bigger than the headings on the rest of the website. A bit inspired from Lego here. It looks kind of nice. So to do that, we'll head into the design tab, heading text and change the heading one settings. Now it's 68 pixels and I'm going to try something new for this tutorial using viewport width as a font size. So I'll say 5VW and this is a dynamic sizing that's rel relative to the width of the user's screen so if i have a big big screen the text will be bigger and if i have a small screen the text will be smaller so if i take this box and drag it out you will see that the text increased in size and that's because the area where the page was displayed was bigger and if i move it up again you can see that the text uh, decreases in size so this is a nice way to display text uh, relative to the screen size. And uh, for tablet, we can actually use fixed numbers because there are not such big differences in the tablet screen sizes. And let's do the same for phone 60 pixels. So slightly bigger than the other headings. Okay, and let's go back to the desktop view. And we add another text module. And I'll just paste some text here saying I'm sorry for this inconvenience. And then we'll add a button module to link to the home page to make it easy for the user. 
go home. And we'll link it to home by just making a slash shift seven like that. Okay, so let's fix the uh, spacing. Before we do that, I'm actually going to change the gutter width in this row to make it a little bit tighter. So let's go to design, sizing, use custom gutter width and reduce it from three to two like that. Okay, looks pretty good, but I could still, oops, it's jumping, jumping, jumping. There we go. Just pull that one up a little bit. And maybe add some extra space before the button. Yeah, I think that looks good. So now we should add our image. And we insert an image module. And there we have our image. So we'll insert it in the right column. And uh, let's add the animation. I want it to slide in from the right. So we go to the design tab, animation and slide. And uh, let's change the direction to left like that. And we can reduce the intensity a bit. Like maybe something like that. Yeah, looks nice. Okay, so now I want to align these two columns horizontally. So I want this text and the button to be in the middle here. And there are a couple of ways to do that in Divi. The most easy way the approach that I think most people would take is to just drag this one down by adding padding and place it in the middle. The problem with this approach is that it's not responsive. So if I use a smaller screen, let's drag this just to show you how that could look like. You can see that this image becomes smaller and uh, this text is not centered anymore because the padding here is in pixels, which is a fixed value. So uh, this is not an approach that I would recommend. So I will undo this and show you a better way. And we start by going to the row settings by clicking the cogwheel. And we go to design, sizing and equalize column heights. So this will make both these columns the same height. You won't see any difference right now, but uh, we have one more step. And that is to go to the content tab for the row settings. And we will choose the column that has the least height. So this is the one that we want to align. That's column number one. So let's click the cogwheel for that column. And we'll head to the advanced tab and we'll open the custom CSS. And in the main element, just type margin colon auto and a semicolon. And now you can see that the content is actually centered aligned. This design will be consistent. And if we have a look in mobile, it will be breaking, broken down to um, a responsive design stacked on top of each other. So this won't affect the mobile design. So that's a really easy approach to center aligning content horizontally in Divi.